Luckily, I can edit these and chop off the beginning because you started it before I was ready. I didn't. I was ready. <laughs> and I started it. You weren't ready. Would you like to introduce it then? No. If you're with someone who's a bit clingy, it can be really hard. You have, want to set a boundary. <laughs> it can be very disconcerting and uncomfortable. <laughs> wow, that's almost creepy. Wow, that's really creepy. So what do you do? <laughs> read Malco from readaboutsex.com. What, Kathy Fartilli from the intimacy dojo.com? <laughs> when someone's ultra clingy, what do you do? I love your website. <laughs> so if you're into energy, one thing you can do is imagine that they're pulling, that a lot of people pull. There's the tendrils of energy going out and kind of pulling at you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can imagine gently and caringly taking the tendrils off and putting them back on themselves. <laughs> if that doesn't work, you may need to talk to them. <laughs> you should always talk to them, I think. Yeah. You should be like, hey, this is something that I'm noticing. Yeah. Or this is this may not be real at all, but in my head I have this thing going on. Mm -hmm. And I want to share it with you. I'm experiencing you, or I maybe I'm just concerned or worried about our relationship getting really clingy. Getting kind of getting weird and it's it's weird for me and I just need to say it. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of say this as just kind of like, hey, I may not be right about this at all, but I need to share this with you because you deserve for me to be honest and transparent with you, which is you role modeling for them to be honest and transparent back. Um, some people may not be aware. I, there's been times when I was really focused on someone and it might have occurred as, as clingy or needy. And I, maybe I was, but if, they, if someone speaks to you and tells you rather than just walking away and ignoring it, there's a chance to save what could be a really good relationship mm -hmm. or friendship. So just bringing it to people's awareness that um, it occurs to me that you're really kind of, you know, I love the analogy you use once, peeing on the bush. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, dogs or cats will pee on a bush to indicate it belongs to them. And I don't like to be possessed. Um, so if someone's occurs to me as peeing on me, like trying to own me, sharing that experience allows them to modify their behavior, or at least have some insights about it. Other things you can say is you can be like, hey, you know, your enthusiasm is occurring to me, like you're kind of, it's feeling very claustrophobic. Would you mind, you know, creating a little bit more distance or being less enthusiastic about our connection? Mm -hmm. You know, and I have said, you know, to people, like, I feel like you're claiming me in social situations. The peeing on the bush was the <laughs> phrase I used. Um, and I just wanted to, I, this is the phrase, I wanted to check in with you. Does that have any relevance? Is that real at all for you? Is it just me? Am I just making it up? The, am I just making it up? I think can be really useful and gentle because people can be like, yeah, you're totally making it up. <laughs> and you basically called them out on something without like having to blame them. Yes. Um, and then if somebody gets pushy or weird with you, when you've already spoken up the first time, and I get that for some people this can be really challenging. Just finding your words can feel really confronting. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, for me, it's like, is this just me? You know, maybe this is just me. I'm in my head about this, right? And I'll, I'll kind of apologize without taking my power away. Yeah. Um, which is also my way of taking ownership of this. Should I be wrong? Yeah. Um, but when you call people out that first time, the second time it's easier for you to speak up and be a little bit more direct and be like, I really do feel like you're being bossy with me or kind of like energetically spooging all over me. Yeah. And that's not cool. Well, and you can also, if you can give someone specifics, that really helps. When you said this and started using the term we about what we were going to do, that felt very uncomfortable for me. When you give someone specifics that, that might, mm -hmm. they might have different cultural expectations or, or beliefs or just experience. And you might really be just in your head about it. Like, you know, 
those 82 pictures you posted on Facebook from that weekend, we were at the same party and tagged me in every one of them. I felt a little weird. <laughs> you know, do you normally do that with everybody? You know, and basically you can point, you can kind of compassionately point to the elephant in the room in a way that gives them space. Because ultimately, for me, as somebody who's goofy and charismatic and I meet a lot of people, in some ways, I think people are just well-meaning. Yeah. And I'm pretty open and friendly with folks. Mm -hmm. And I just assume they're clunky. Yeah. And so I'm just telling them what I need for me to feel more comfortable around them. Yeah. And if they, if they go to every party and take 82 pictures and, and tag the people there, maybe it's just normal. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's normal. normal. So, again, like you not speaking up is going to be the beginning of a much larger problem. So how do you figure out how to use your words? And for my woo-woo friends out there, energetically, you're using, you're using vibration to speak into existence adjustments that you need. Right. And that's... And energetic. <laughs> it is. It is magic. And they energetically, you can also... I love your analogy. We have another video on, on Velcro. It's just imagining that your Velcro is straight. And there's nothing really for them to cling on yeah, to. Yeah, there's nothing for them to hook on to. And then when you get really good at it, you pull your Velcro strands in so that you're smooth, so that people can't glom on to you. So can we, for people that are energetic, can we try that? So just imagine that he's, he's clinging, and I'm straightening my Velcro and pulling it in, and he's just rubbing up against some Rain-X glass. It actually feels much less threatening to me. I love your website. <laughs> so it, there's nothing really for him to cling to, and it it, it actually feels much safer for me. This is so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> My Velcro is pulled in now. Oh, uh, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> and again, like I'm being silly, but like the thing that's missing is you saying, yeah. "Hey, yeah, what you're doing right now, it's not working for me." I really appreciate you, your appreciation, but it's occurring to me as a little bit invasive. And when you name the elephant in the room, if that's really what they're doing, you get a quick read on how delusional they are. Because they either have to cop to it, and they might not cop to it, you know, verbally. Yeah. But if somebody's like, what do you mean? <laughs> Man. Love being on you. <laughs> then you're like, okay, this is a whole different situation yeah. that we need to deal with. And again, you're gonna to need to use your words. Yeah. And by the way, you asked me to take the pictures at your birthday party. That's true. <laughs> she she's a great PR person. <laughs> Please leave comments below and let us know what you notice. If it, this works for you, mm -hmm. if you have upgrades, we'd love to hear them. Yep. Thank you.